Hey guys, Josh Mall, the voice with Swimming Pool Science, and you know, this is a little bit of an addendum to our last chlorine video. I feel like I forgot a few things, so I went and picked up this magic board here so we can uh, do a little demonstration and go over some of the stuff we kind of forgot about. So uh, let's get started. Let's get this board fired up, guys. Check this out. This is cool. All right, that's a little better. Now we've got some stuff to talk about. Uh, let's start out with some kind of interesting fun facts. Uh, when chlorine was discovered in the late eight or late 1700s, early 1800s, uh, it was named for the Greek word chloros, meaning greenish yellow for the color of the gas. And uh, if you watched our earlier video, you saw that greenish yellow gas when we uh, threw some chemicals together and made chlorine gas. You can understand why it came up with that. But when they figured out how to get it into that solid form, that calcium hypochlorite, they started sprinkling it everywhere and trying things with it. And they found that, hey, if they sprinkled it on dead bodies, guess what? They didn't rot as quickly. They didn't stink as much. So they started using it for preserving dead bodies and they used it to, to help control the plague and get rid of gross stuff. And, and um, you know, it was used for stuff like that. And people got a little bit healthier, but they really didn't quite understand the effects of it. Um, it was even to the point where doctors were encouraged to inhale the fumes. How about that? You know, like breathing in that nice chlorine and creating that hydrochloric acid inside your lungs, which uh, uh, some might say might open up those passageways, but you know, as we now know, it's not a very good thing. Uh, in World War I, it was used as the first chemical weapon. It's a gas that's about, uh, I believe it's 3.6 times heavier than air. So it would waft across no man's lane and sink down into the trenches of the enemy. And if I remember right, the, uh, the German, the German doctor that had figured out how to uh, kind of wield chlorine gas, his, his wife had killed herself over, over what he had created and done. And you'll have to research that. Don't quote me on it. May or may not be true. I don't know. So those are some fun, interesting facts about chlorine and a little bit more about its history. Uh, but let's get back over to pool stuff. Let's talk about tabs for a minute here. Um, very acidic, very low pH. They will eventually destroy anything they touch. So they will, they're corrosive, they're bad. They create a low pH environment. Pretty much if you have a chlorine tablet in a small space, you have a environment with lots of acid in it. So for example, a skimmer, and that acid is gonna damage the skimmer. It's gonna make the plastic, that skimmer's made out of brittle where it's gonna crack and break instead of flex like you need it to through hot and cold conditions. And then you're gonna be in big trouble. You're gonna get stains around your main drain. Uh, your chlorine flow that floats around your pool, yep, guess what? That's eventually gonna crap out, but you know what? That's okay, it's supposed to crap out. Uh, you, you don't wanna put it anywhere else but in a chlorine floater or in a chlorine tower on a professional pool or a pool that, or a pool that runs 24 hours a day because eventually that's gonna get destroyed too. Um, you know, they're okay to handle briefly. You can pick them up briefly. Uh, I re recommend always rinsing your hands off after putting them in the floater, but don't be um, too scared of touching them for a few moments time. If you are, you can actually get individually wrapped chlorine tablets. These are pretty cool because they, they are individually wrapped in plastic bags, well, other than the environmental flactor and one use plastic and, and, and making more trash, but you know, you just open it and you, you, you dump it into your chlorine floater and it's, uh, it's in there or you can take it and you can smash it up inside the bag and it's all contained and you can put that in your chlorine floater if you want it to dissolve a little quicker. So um, look for those uh, individually wrapped chlorine tablets because they are out there if you really don't want to touch them or have to put on gloves every single time. Uh, how about this one? I realized shortly after I uploaded our first chlorine video, we didn't talk about how much chlorine you should be putting in your pool. That's right. How about this? How about two to four parts per million is that ideal range. Now, keep in mind that is, of course, if our cyanuric acid is in that ideal 40 to 60 part per million range. Why is that? Because the higher the cyanuric acid is, the slower the chlorine works. That magic range is about 40 to, or I'm sorry, that magic range is about 10%, seven to 10% of whatever your cyanuric acid is. That means that there's gonna be enough cyanuric acid to protect the chlorine in the water, but the chlorine's not gonna act so slow that algae will outpace it and outgrow it. Um, we also wanna make sure that our phosphates are down between uh, no more than about 10 parts per billion. Um, zero would be ideal on that because once again, 
those, uh, those, that algae can get out of control if that phosphate's too high. pH should be in that golden range, 7.2 to 7.6. Remember our eyes and our mucous membranes and things like that are all around that pH of 7.4. So we're much happier and we're much more comfortable swimming in our pools when that pH is right around that 7.4 range. In fact, we've got a graph right here. And if you look at this graph, you can see right here, as that pH gets higher, chlorine's effectiveness, that hypochlorous acid um, starts to go down and that, that, that effectiveness of chlorine starts to drop. So at a 6.0, you've got 90% of your chlorine working, but guess what? Your water's eating away at your pool surface and you, or your pool surface, and you sure as hell aren't swimming in there because man, you're gonna be itching and screaming and fussing. That is not a good thing. At 6.5, at you got about 84% of your chlorine working. Uh, 7 it's about 71%. At a 7.4, that ideal range, it's right about 50%. This is where we want to be. This is where all the numbers are set for. Um, this, is, this is where we want to be in that, in that 7.4 range where 50% of our chlorine's working. Now, if you've got an algae situation or something like that, you can temporarily push that pH down in order to get more of that chlorine to work, convert more of those hypochlorite ions into hypochlorous acid so that they will do a better job of fighting that algae. And then you just bring that pH right back up towards 7.4 once you get things under control. Um, chlorine is not only an oxidizer, but it's also a disinfectant. It's the only thing out there that doubles as an oxidizer and a disinfectant. It's the two for one thing right there. So not only is it gonna take out the algae, it is also going to burn it off and get rid of it and convert it into other things. So that's why chlorine is pretty awesome. One of the great things, it is a oxidizer and a sanitizer. Uh, how about some myths and facts here? Let's talk about a few myths and facts. When I get in a pool with chlorine, like my wife with blonde hair, it turns my hair green after I wash it. Well, no, it doesn't. That is not chlorine. That is copper in the water. You go swimming in a pool that's got lots of copper in it. Then you go and you wash your hair and you run that alkaline um, soap, or what do they call it? That, that, that special soap for your hair. It's um, um, shampoo, that's right, shampoo. You put that alkaline shampoo in your hair and you get it all frothy and all that stuff. And then what happens is that copper that's still left in your hair precipitates out into your hair and turns it green. It has nothing to do with chlorine. Um, how about this, how about this? Let's jump over to a fact. Humans need chlorine for their immune systems and your digestive tract. If you are chlorine deficient, you will have issues with digestion and you also will have a compromised immune system. That's right, our immune systems use chlorine to kill the bad stuff that's in our body that we wanna get rid of. You gotta have chlorine in your system. How do we get it? Well, we get it the same way we get chlorine for our pool and that is through salt. That's right, all chlorine that we use and is manufactured in the world comes from salt being split apart just like our bodies do it. Uh, how about this? Salt pool is not a chlorine pool. Yes, it is. If you have a salt pool, you have a chlorine pool. Read it and weep, buddy. That's the way it is. I'm not gonna tell you anymore because that's just the truth. Um, how about peeing in the pool? Pee is fine in a pool. Pee is sterile. Pee is a little bit low pH. It's extra minerals. However, the stuff in your pee that reacts with chlorine and then converts to form things like chloroform and all kinds of yucky stuff, that stuff comes out of the water and hangs at the surface and then you breathe it in that's gonna aggravate your asthma, that's bad for you. So it's not so much that you're peeing in the pool and that it's kind of gross to swim in, it's that it's dangerous to have in your lungs, it's not good. Think about that next time you're at the YMCA and you got 55 kids swimming in the pool, yeah, guess what? You're not breathing in some very good stuff down at the water surface. Um, what else we got? Burning eyes means high chlorine. Not necessarily. Nine times out of 10, it's because the pH is either too high or too low and that 7.4 of your eyes is vastly different to whatever the 7.0 or the, or the 8.0 that's in the actual swimming pool and you are feeling that difference in your eyes. Um, it can be contributed if the chlorine is excessively high, say uh, above 10 parts per million, you know, you get into eight to 10 part per million range, you're not gonna wanna be swimming after that. That's, that's when I say, hey, that chlorine's pushing 10 parts per million. Nobody needs to get in that pool. We're up around five or six. We're kinda double that, that range there, that's okay. You might be a little itchy or dry when you get out, but it's not gonna be the end of the world. However, when you get to that 10 part per million limit, you really don't wanna be in the pool. Uh, it's hard to test after that. Most test kits don't go past 10 parts per million, and you gotta dilute the water down by half and do some special tricks to really calculate what the chlorine is beyond there. Um, and, it, and like I said, it's not comfortable. The chlorine smell when you walk into that hotel, into the pool area, and you smell that chlorine, and boy, you think, that's a clean pool. I can smell that chlorine. 
you are not smelling chlorine, you are smelling the disgusting byproducts of chlorine, the chloramines, the combined chlorine, the yucky stuff, the oxidized oils and dirt and scum and fecal matter from all those other hotel guests that didn't take a shower and clean themselves before they went in the pool. They used the pool to clean themselves. Gross. If you smell chlorine, and you can do this at home, here's an experiment. Take a, two buckets of water with lids, put a cap full of bleach in one, which is straight water, close the lid, take a cap full of bleach in another one, and then pee in it, close that lid, lift up both buckets, guess which one you're gonna smell chlorine in, that chlorine smell, the bucket you peed in, that's right. Stuff to think about. So let's see here, what have we covered? We covered the myths and the facts. We covered how much chlorine you should have in a pool if our cyanuric acid is in range, if our pH is in range, if our phosphates are in range, this will do it every single time. If these are out of whack, you may have to push that chlorine level up to compensate and get it under control. We know our do's and don'ts with tabs. We have found out some of our fun facts. We know the effectiveness here on the pH scale. The higher the pH, the less effective the chlorine is. We know that chlorine is an oxidizer and a sanitizer. So guys, that is gonna do it for us. That's all the stuff that I left out of the last video and I'm so glad you watched and you can share it with you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one, everybody.